Well, we're in for some big changes this year. The dual sport lineup has completely changed and it's something which I wasn't expecting. So with all of Trek bikes or a lot of them this year, they are doing the generation system. So the dual sports are now on the generation five, just to be confusing because no one knows where the generation started. Trek just pulled it out of nowhere that this is generation five. There are big changes. Overall, let's talk about the biggest one you'll see on the newest dual sport series compared to the old ones, and that is the lack of front suspension. Now to compensate this, all of them now are with a much bigger tire. So previous generations would have been a 700C more road bike style, 38 kind of C setup, beefy road bike style, kind of gravelish tire. This was a fast rolling bike with front suspension, a wide variety of gears leading up to single speed on the front and 10, 12 on the back or multiple on the front and a multiple on the back. Over the years, they've refined and refined this system and now we're looking at what you see as the newest system. Now, advertised right off the back, removing that front suspension, they're saying it loses up to 4.2 pounds. That is only on the highest end dual sport three generation five model. That one comes with a carbon fiber front fork and that loses 4.2 pounds more or it's lighter than the old dual sport three, which is shocking. I'm honestly surprised that they were able to get that much weight out of it. Other cool features they've added to this one are the attachments similar to the checkpoints. So the underside what used to be called B-Rad holes, and now they're just storage holes where you can attach bags directly to it. You can obviously put all the old racks on it, and the tires are the big, big change around. Like I said, this used to be 700C, now you've got rid of that, and you're going to 27.5 by 2.0. So this has the GR0 Expert tire on it, that's 650 by 50 C or 27 and a half by 2.0. It's a fast rolling tire. It's kind of like their gravel setup. So you'll get a little traction on the edges, but generally it's about puncture protection and fast rolling abilities. The rims on the Dual Sport 3 are a Covey double wall tubeless ready setup. It doesn't look like this one comes tubeless, but obviously now you have the option to do it. So potentially you could drop this 26.2 pound weight of the Dual Sport 3 down even more than that, you know, possibly down to 25 if you're lucky. This does have hydraulic disc brakes on Dual Sport 3, the XR Endurance Elite grips from Bontrager. So those are the ones with the wider rest for your hands so it feels comfier and overall will just be a comfortable position. So yeah, they've reduced weight in the frame, which is key and important, but putting that carbon fiber front fork, you're gonna get vibration absorption through it and save an insane amount of weight compared to last year's. So these now are significantly lighter weight. Dual Sport 3 comes with Dior 10 speed on it. So an excellent shifting setup. It's gonna work very well and nothing really too bad with it. As you go down to the Dual Sport 2, you're sticking with the more Dual Sporty gearing setup. So you are getting multiple on the front with two gears up front, a big, huge chain ring size. So like really big sizes. So you're gonna be able to fly on this one. Nine speed on the back, so it's gonna work superbly. You still get a GR0 650 by 50 tire so 27 and a half by 2.0 still gonna roll fast but you are just getting a Bontrager connection rim so it's not going to be tubeless ready unfortunately and it's gonna weigh you know significantly more the tire between the two models it's not massive but it's a notice noticeable difference in weight between those rims as well you go to the aluminum fork so this one won't absorb vibration as much well, really any. And most importantly, it's nowhere near as light as that carbon fiber one. The carbon fiber one they've chose is honestly insanely lightweight. Like this is ridiculous for the size of fork it is. This one will save you weight compared to the old Dual Sport 2, but it's uh, not gonna be as expensive. And uh, overall will still absorb a decent amount with that tire size, 28.2 pounds for this one. And with that, you still get hydraulic disc brakes they are coming with C-Star 
BH something brakes. I've honestly never heard of them. Doesn't mean they're a bad brake. The picture shown looks like a Tektro brake, but in the spec sheet, it shows something completely different. So that's just something worth to be noted. There is still gonna be changes throughout that, which is gonna happen as they ship in. It's still like that for all bikes, where things might come in a little different than they're supposed to. As we look down to the Dual Sport 1 Generation 5, this comes in at a relatively good price, $900 Canadian, so I assume that's about $800 even US. The shifting has an eight speed on the back, so not as wide range on the back, but it's still gonna shift relatively well. It's definitely not as fast as its predecessor or the higher Dual Sport 2. The brakes have been downgraded again, but they're still disc brakes, so that's good news. You're not getting any rim brakes on any of these models. It is like this all-in-one bodied shifter brake unit, so it's, it's entry level, but it will still stop you for most people that will work if you're a lightweight commuter and you're just whipping around town with no real speed or issues where you're gonna need to stop extremely rapidly on the regular occasion these will work no problem this one has a steel fork so they actually change it again so there's three different forks for these models and this one weighs in at 31.6 pounds overall between all three models it's a nice change up. It's not massive. Really getting rid of that front fork is saving a lot of weight. And then instead of putting on a really slim tire, you're putting a wider, beefier tire. You'll run it at a slightly lower pressure than before. And you should get relatively the same amount of cushion from it. Now, as the generation system exists, you are able to purchase still the old generation, generation four dual sports at the same time. There's definitely a limited number of those, so it's going to be harder to see where it blends. Is it going to last a year or six months or two years? It's really all over the place between the models and such. Which to choose? If you're looking at a Dual Sport 1, how do you know to go to a Gem 4 or Gem 5? You know, it gets a little bit tricky. I don't know which one I'd recommend. If you're looking at a Dual Sport 1, for example, and you're looking at Generation 4 versus Generation 5, which one would I recommend? Honestly? I have no idea. These bikes are so similar, it's unbelievable. I think if you were going to be going on a lot of off-road or the beaten path you're shortcutting is, you know, a really rough trail or something a little more aggressive than cobblestone or paved or gravel, go for the one with the suspension. It will work better. But if you are a 90% gravel city streets and a very short shortcut somewhere, Go for the new one, but why? I don't really have a good reason for it. In the Dual Sport 1's case, the new one's actually heavier than the old one. In the Dual Sport 3, it's a whole different story, but in the Dual Sport 1, you're actually on a heavier bike. I wish I could give you an opinion. Normally, I feel pretty one way or the other. Go for the new one, go for the old one. The old ones are all gonna be a cheaper price than the new ones. The new ones offer benefits, but I don't know if they really outweigh how this bike was produced in the first place. It is really the trickiest, as I look at specs, as I read up on them, features, benefits, advantages to all these things, which one's the best? These both are great options and great bikes. I see no reason to buy one or the other, and honestly, you can't go wrong. Personally, I'd probably choose the cheaper of the ones. If you're looking for a bit more of a gravel bike, go for the Dual Sport 3, but now we're mixing the FX in with it. I think Trek has really muddled it up a little bit, and it's not all their fault with the supply chain issues, but overall, it's making for a really tricky choice. And so no downsides to buying the old generation, generation four Dual Sports. They're fantastic. All the parts are similar. Everything's gonna shift and react and handle the same. Minor geometry tweaks and getting rid of suspension and switching the tires out, I don't think you'll have an issue either way. You can't go wrong with all of them. If you're looking at this category of bike, you're gonna make a good choice either way. I think just come down to which one looks better for you. And if you're going a bit rougher trails, yeah, probably go for the suspension, but I wouldn't be too worried about it. Overall, you're gonna make a good choice either way. All right, hopefully this helps you a little bit. It's not really clear to me. But thanks for watching. Thanks.